I am uh, so very, very thankful to get to be a dad. That's my, that's my place in life. Judah, it was over in Genesis 44, and I'm not going to preach. I, I really had something really good prepared. <laughs> like it's really good, but it's for another time. But it was Judah who unknowingly approached his brother Joseph in Genesis 44, and he said, Master, you asked of us, Joseph now sitting on the throne of all Egypt, You asked of us this simple question. Do you have a father? Some could answer with great bluster. Yes. I could answer in the overwhelming affirmative, not only do I have a heavenly father, said the robin to the sparrow friend, I'd truly like to know why these busy human beings rush about and worry so, said the sparrow back to the robin friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. We have that father. But I, I had the greatest earthly example of a heavenly father too. He taught me to love God by serving others. I took Ashton the other day on a little drive through the south end of Columbus. Some of you that are acquainted with this city know the south end. Parsons Avenue, Williams Road, Welch Avenue, Freebus Avenue. It's all down in there that the hillbillies and the folks of color mingled together as one. With one common enemy, we were all poor. Would it not have been for Buckeye Steel, many of us wouldn't have eaten. It's still there, and I drove her by it because... It's important to let our children know where they came from. It's important to give them chores to do, to instill in them a work ethic. It's important to train them that just because you have a hand stuck out doesn't mean that your hand is put out for anything other than somebody to put a tool in for you to work your way up. My dad taught me to serve others. I showed her just down from Parsons Avenue on Williams Road where my daddy would take me every Sunday morning of the world at 6.30 in the morning to start an old school bus. Now you can imagine how old it was back in 1962. No heat. Holes in the floorboard. And my dad would drive that school bus up and down the streets of the South End and pick up those little children and always had a little bit of hard candy to give them, to bring them to the house of God. My dad didn't tell me to go to church. My dad didn't tell me, you and your mom go to church. My dad said, we're going to church. The greatest attribute of leadership is a simple one. It's just... Be there. Be there in the morning sun and be there in the evening rain. Be there when they get up and be there when they go to bed. Teach them by example how to love God by loving other people. I, I watched a daddy. I showed her there's where he used to work, Permacrete Products, right there off Hall Road. 
I want to thank another great dad today. In fact, two of them in Elkhart, Indiana. I want to thank Senior Elder Marion Schrock for the example that he's showing that entire region and for our campus pastor, Manny Gonzalez, who's doing an, an amazing job there in a hard area. But my dad, my dad taught me to protect my family. Now I might put up with a whole lot of things and I might love you very deeply, but I'm six foot two and don't put your hands or your tongue on my children. They're not your children. They're my children. My father taught me to protect my family. And if you're in my family, there are not that many of us anymore. Six of us is all there is. Ashton and Joni and Ashton and Austin and Mother P and Amy. Don't touch my family. You'll get on the fighting side of me real fast. Because my daddy taught me at a pizza shop on Parsons Avenue with drunks on every street corner. We didn't see color. All we knew was poor. And my daddy liked a pizza shop called Tommy's. And I walked in there one day and being a boy, I grabbed one of those little things you do those, you used to have those things you slide and it knocked the bowling pins up. Some cat was playing that and I grabbed it. And I'm not sure he could talk. He just went, Ugh. He had tattoos on places. Most folk don't have places. He was ripped in the natural like I am in the spirit. He had the beard I wish I did. And back then, this is, this is, this is late 60s. He had, he had piercings in his nose and in his ears. Riding a big chopper motorcycle parked outside. Hell's angels on the back of his vest. Well, that didn't mean anything to me. So I grabbed it again. And he came around that game and I thought he was coming right from my throat. And suddenly I felt an arm first. Then I felt a leg. And my daddy stood between me and him and said, you want to say something to the boy? Say it to me. We need some fathers like that. We need some fathers that protect their families. We need some fathers that love their wives. And Ashton, Ashton is right, around our house, we call Mother P a single mom now. She's a single mom, because she's still my mom. And she'll always be my mom. But I call her mom in here. When I call her on the phone, I call her mommy. And I'm 60, because my dad taught me, no matter how tall you get, your parents always somebody to look up to. And I love my father-in-law with all my heart, with all my heart. And don't tell, let her tell you, you can't have a new mower. You have all the mowers and wood splitters you want. Amen. My father taught me to love my wife. The D word has never been mentioned in my home and it never will be. My daddy, when I took Ashton over there, right off Hall Road, Permacrete Products, Anderson Concrete, over there where my dad worked for $137 a week. And then he'd come home and he'd get me, spend time with me, take me to those lakes over there and we'd go fishing every night. As soon as dark came, he'd get in that old 1948 Dodge and he'd get another lunch box and off to work he'd go cleaning a beauty parlor, buffing the floors and cleaning out other people's trash. And he didn't have to cut the grass because he taught me to cut it when I was eight years old. 
My mother didn't have to wash the dishes. She taught my sister to do it when she was eight years old. And I don't like to work or have to work. I love to work. I love it. I love everything about it. My daddy worked for $137 a week. A week for 60 hours. And I watched him on my mother's 50th birthday. He said, I got something special for her. Now my dad, he's always hiding stuff. If it's got orange paint on it, he claimed it. He put orange paint on everything. And he went and got a little box. He would buried it out in the barn. And he brought it out and had orange paint on it. And he said, I've been working on this since I worked at Permacrete. I said, what is it, Daddy? He opened it up. And he said, I've been saving for this day since that first job in Columbus. What is it, Daddy? I'm going to give her $1,000 for every year. Opened up a box buried in the barn with 50,000 cash dollars in it. And handed it to my mom. I'm going to let you go. I just want to echo a couple of things. Number one, that question reverberates in all of our hearts. Because somebody today could not answer that question, do you have a father? They could not answer yes. For whatever reason, the men of this church in Elkhart are required to step in and fill that gap. At Harvest Preparatory School, over 40% of the students have no father in the home. Do you have any time? Get with Roger. Be a royal ranger. Say, well, what do they do? They teach boys how to camp. and They teach boys how to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir. And they teach young boys how to put up a tent and live outside. They teach young men to be men. You could be a part of that. We need you. We need you to fill in the gap. And you can. You have such tremendous gifts. And I just call on you. Be a father to somebody. Be a father to somebody. Because he is a father to you. Now, Father, bless these. We take a moment. We'll honor you as our father. My dad gave my mother $50,000, but you, Father, gave your only begotten son that if we would just believe on you, we would have eternal life. Let every person open your heart now if you've never said yes to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, pray this prayer. Everybody pray it with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. I accept Him now as my Savior, as the full penalty of my sins. I repent. I invite you into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Satan, self, I renounce you. You are not my God. I will not serve you. God is my Father. His Son, Jesus, is my Savior. I receive forgiveness now and a home in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God that at some point, everybody has prayed that prayer. If you prayed that prayer this morning, the leaders of this great church will be here at the altar. If you